نحمد ونسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب الشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل لقدتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیرا من اہلی رب یسر ولا تؤسر و تم من بالخیر و بکنستعین یا فتاح رب زدنی علما رب حبلی حکم و الحکنی بالصالحین ربنا آتنا فی الدنیا حسنتا و فی الاخرت حسنتا و قنا عذاب النار یا اول الاولین یا آخر الاخرین یا ذا القوت المتین یا رحم المسحقین یا ارحم الراحمین یا ارحم الراحمین یا ارحم الراحمین اللہم انی انا نجعلک فی نحورهم و نعوذ بکا من شرورهم حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل اللہم یا رب اللہم انی اصلک حبک و حب من یحبک و حب عملی یقربنی الى حبک اللہم آتی نفس تقواہ و زکیہ انت خیر من زکاہ انت ولیوہ و مولا آمین یا رحم الرحمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ الحمدللہ by the grace and توفیق of اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی today we are going to talk about آیہ نمبرز 175 76, 77 and 78 from سورہ آل عمران And we'll go over the recitation and the meaning first. Audhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna ma thalikum ash-shaytan yukhawifu awliyaah yukhawifu awliyaah fala takhafuhum wa khafun in kuntum mu'mineen. Innama, innama is it is only. So it is basically it's an emphasis. But when we, whenever we say innama in the Quran, what it means in Arabic is that the matter is this and only this. There's nothing other than this. Right? So um, it is only or certainly this is only. Dalikum that, and and dalikum is used when it is like one matter. Dalika, and kum is for all of you. So one matter, but it is being told to a lot of people. Right. So it the matter is only that this that that matter for all of you that what that shaitan a shaitan shaitan you have you how we fool frightens you. It is shaitan who frightens you. Awliya ahu with or uh, with his allies with his friends with his uh, supporters. Fala so do not the half who Khauf is fear, so do not fear them, meaning the awliya of shaitan. Do not fear them. Wa khafuni, and Allah subhanahu wa taala saying, wa khafuni, and fear me in kuntum if you are mu'minin, if you are believers. Then the next ayah, ayah number one seventy six. إنهم لن يضر الله شيئا يريد الله أن لا يجعل لهم حظا في الآخرة ولهم عذاب عظيم. ولا and from this ayah the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and by extension all the Muslims are being addressed. ولا and do not or do not let. Yahzunka, do not let uh, grieve you. Do not make you. Uh, do not let make you sad. Like, and what should not make you sad? Alladina, those who yusariuna, those who hasten. Uh, yusariuna is to like to run and to you know do do all this hasten to do do stuff for uh, uh, or hasten towards you know making an effort towards something. Fil kufr uh, in. Disbelief. Those who are making a lot of efforts, those who are rushing, those who are hastening, those who are doing all this hard work, but they are doing all this hard work for kufr. Those should not dishearten you. Those those should not grieve you, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and O Muslims. In whom, indeed, certainly no doubt that they, lai yadurullah, they will never harm Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Shayan anything. They are doing all this hard work. They are doing all these things, but do you think they can harm Allah? They can never harm Allah. Uh, Lun is a stronger negation. La is no. Lun is never. So they will never harm Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in anything. Yuridullahu. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala intends. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does the irada. He has the intention. Allah intends. Allah 
that not yaj'ala he will set lahum for them hazzan any portion fil akhira in the hereafter walahum and for them Adabun is a punishment, Adim, great. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, those who hasten towards disbelief, they should not make you grieve, O Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or, or, or Muslims. Um, they cannot harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. Allah intends not to spare for them any share in the hereafter. And for them, there is a mighty punishment. It's a huge punishment. And then ayah 177. إن الذين اشتروا الكفر بالإيمان لن يضروا الله شيئا ولهم عذاب أليم إن الذين indeed those who اشتروا those who have purchased ishtara to purchase to barter something to give something and get something in exchange like when we go to uh, buy something in a store we give money and we get something in exchange so we have purchased something so those who there is no doubt that those who have purchased al kufra disbelieve bil iman with the faith meaning they gave up their faith and they took disbelief in return they made this exchange lay yadurullah shay'an they will never harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in anything. If by this exchange, they will not harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything, meaning by this exchange. That they will, they, they, they exchange this, they change their belief for disbelief. But through this exchange, they are not harming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in anything. Walahum adabun alim. Rather, the harm is for themselves because for them is adabun alim. There's a punishment which is alim, is adim. In the previous ayah, the punishment was adim, which is like big, huge. And in this ayah, it is adabun alim, meaning alim is the painful punishment. When it comes from adab, uh, then alim means painful punishment. Then ayah 178. <laughs> إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ لِيَزْدَادُوا إِثْمًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ وَلَا and let not يَحْسَبَنَّ think or make an assumption الَّذِينَ those who kafar disbelief meaning those who disbelieve they should not make this assumption that Innama, the, uh, annama, that numli, that we've given them respite, uh, we've given respite, lahum to them, khayrun li anfusihim, that this is good for them, like this respite that they have in this world, that they are able to breathe, they are able to do things, and they are able to have wealth and everything, despite doing wrong. Do not think that it is good, uh, do not let those people think that this is good for themselves. Innama, only, the matter is only, and this and this only, that Numli lahum, we give respite to them. Liyazdadu, so that it may increase, it may do ziyada, it may, it may increase them in what? In ithma, in sins. It, it just increase all this extra time, extra um, money, extra power that they're getting is just increasing them in sins. Walahum adabum muheen, and for them is a punishment which is muheen, which is humiliating which has uh, zilla in it like uh, there is uh, so um, there are three kinds of punishment that are, that are talked about in these three ayat the the three aspects of the punishment the punishment is huge the punishment is painful and the punishment is humiliating may Allah um, ta'ala not make us off them and protect us from such a fate right so in these ayat now let's go in a little bit more detail in these ayat and as we know we were talking about the battle of uhud and people had come to tell the believers that uh, uh, you know that uh, the the Quraysh are coming to get you, so you should be just, so you know don't don't even think of going. It's a suicide mission, and why are you thinking of going and everything? You should be scared and everything, right? So now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is uh, telling us he's he's uh, he's giving us some lessons. Now he's told us this whole incident. Now he's telling us some lessons from that uh, incident. After Uhud, now he's telling us the different things that happen in Uhud, and through that we are learning some lessons. But these lessons are timeless. Right. The the battle of Uhud is was there to help us understand the lessons, but the lessons for are for all of us for all of our lives. Right. So in this ayah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that it is none but Shaitan who frightens you of his friends. So do not fear them, but fear me if you are believers. Right. So what had happened was 
Naum bin Masood. He had come and he had told, he was one of the leaders of the tribe. He had come and told the Prophet and the Muslims that, you know, the other people, uh, the Quraysh are there and you should be scared of them and everything. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, it is none but shaitan frightens you. But why is it? it was a person who, who tried to come and do that? Why? Because any person who works on the path of shaitan, right? Sometimes it, it was a thing that a human being had done, done this, has said this, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is the shaitan that did it. Sometimes what happens is people join the mission of shaitan. They, they do what shaitan wants them to do, right? Or they try to go against the deen of Allah as, a, as just as shaitan does, right? So then for the for um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no difference. These people are as, as good as shaitan. There's no difference between these people and shaitan. They are they're human beings, but they are regarded as shayateen. May Allah ta'ala protect us from them or from being one of them. May Allah ta'ala keep our deen intact. Right? So this this thing to, um, to, to make the believers scared and everything, right? This is something that shaitan had done, right? So when shaitan tries to scare us with anything, then we should try to, we should remember this ayah. Ayah number 175 of Surah Al-Imran. Right? That all feelings of fear and panic. Shaitan loves to plant these fears in, in believers' hearts. Why does Shaitan love to plant these fears of these feelings of fear and panic and everything? Because Shaitan wants to demoralize the human beings and fright um, the believers uh, and make them frightened and like, um, you know, uh, and frighten them with uh, from the um, fear of like the ally, the um, their allies who are the allies of the Shayateen that you know what like and here in this context it was the Quraysh and their confederates, right? So Shaitan was trying to scare the believers out of them, you know, but what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us is they have no real power actually. What we are learning from this ayah is they have no real power, nor can they pose any real threat to the Muslims. Any power other than the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an illusion. Is an illusion. It just looks like they are, they are powerful, but they are not. It just looks like that, right? So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, teaching us some golden words here. Some things to always remember, which is, فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ meaning do not fear them but fear me if you are believers and we are believers alhamdulillah we are believers so what what should we do when we fear something anything makes us scared any and and things will make us scared in this world we will fear a lot of things we have uh, we are weak as uh, as human beings we have a lot of needs we have a lot of want, wants we have a lot of relationships we are scared for a lot of things when those fears come and pop up then whether we have they're coming from our own nafs or from shayateen of the jinns doing vaswasa to us or whether it's shayateen from the human beings tell, telling us you know you should not do hijab and go out it will be it can be harmful they, they can be lots of kind of things right so allah swt is saying do not fear them but fear me right and um what happens is um when a person becomes firm on iman then they don't fear in in the way that the hypocrites fear right they don't they have fears but then they put those fear aside because their fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bigger than their any other fear right? it's not that they don't have any fear yes we are normal human beings we don't just become we don't start like once we have iman we don't just start floating in the air and we don't have any human concerns and we won't feel hurt by anything or we won't feel sad by anything or we won't fear anything in the future no that are that are normal human emotions that will happen but when we put the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the biggest fear in our life, then what happens is we get we get strong in our iman and we get firm in our iman that we don't fear all these anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that level. Yes, there were those are the fears that come and go, but they, they don't impact our life in the sense that we don't ba make our decisions of our life, the path of our life based on those fears. Our life is based on the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, situations will come in our life. Shaitan will scare us. Things will happen. But what do we have to do? We don't have to get scared. If we do let other fears penetrate our heart too much, then we won't be able to be firm in our deen. We won't be able. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us something that will help us become firm in our deen. The opposite of this is nifaq, right? Because what does, uh, when we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then 
we it takes us towards sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it takes us towards being firm in our deen, right? The opposite of this, what happens is we somebody who doesn't look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they 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 have these imaginary dangers all the time. They are always looking at other people. What will people think if I do this? What will people say if I do that? You know, this 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 word, what will people say? This we should take out believers. We should take it out of a dictionary totally. What will people say? Yes, a believer takes care of their honor. A believer takes care of their reputation. A believer takes does whatever is needed. We tie our camel, but we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We do the best. We don't like uh, let people say in, uh, anything and we don't defend ourselves. No, Yusuf al-Islam made an effort to defend himself when he had the opportunity to do so. He said to the king that no, like uh, call those ladies, um, ask them and find out what happened in my case. I am innocent. Right? When he got that chance, he made that chance to do things. When the Prophet sallam, was walking in the night one time with his wife Safiya, radiallahu anha, her mother, then there were two sahabas who were passing by nearby. And then when they saw him, the Prophet sallam, told them, this is your mother Safiya. And what did the sahaba say? The sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, we would never think anything wrong about you. And what did the Prophet sallam, said? Yes, I know you wouldn't, but shaitan is real. Meaning shaitan does put a in people's heart and he might have put something. So uh, so before anything comes, the Prophet ﷺ clarified, okay, this is my, I'm, I'm walking at this time in the night. This is my wife. I'm walking with my wife. It's not like, um, uh, so, uh, so it is, yes, we protect our reputation. We do our things. We do our due diligence. We do, um, we take care of ourselves and our reputation, our health, our well-being and everything. But our fear is only in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hypocrites, what they try to do is they try to weaken and demo, demoralize the believers by these imagining dangers. And what, what is their purpose? Why do they make, uh, why do they want the believers to be fearful? Because through this fear, they want them to abandon their ab obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So until the Muslims, if you look at the history of uh, Muslims in the last um, um, 500 years or something, right? Until the time Muslims were afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they had the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts, right? Uh, the people were afraid of them. People were afraid of the Muslims then, right? When the Muslims as a group, and again, it's not uh, talking about individual, but as a group, many, many, many Muslims, when they stopped in their life, it, when they stopped fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what happens? Then they start fearing every other person. Then they follow every person that they see that, okay, we have to be like them. We cannot like stop being like them. We have to be like these people to fit in with these people and everything, right? And then anybody who threatens them, them with anything, it, it hits their heart, right? And uh, they, get, they get afraid of everything, every circumstance, every situation. Everything puts them, pushes them deeper and deeper and deeper. Rather, uh, when a person has the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what happens is then others are afraid of them. Then they have this robe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts an awe uh, for them like we learned about the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the awe of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when even the enemy was at a one month's distance, right? And if we have Iman too, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put the our awe in the hearts of those people who are trying to harm us as well. Right? He will put that and he will he will take care of us. When we take care of our, our obligations towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then everybody fears us. And the person who does not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they fear everything else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, and also, what does the fear of Allah mean? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, khafuni, fear me, what does that mean? Does that mean that we sit, we feel paralyzed and we start crying? Um, and everything that we keep crying all the time that I fear Allah, I fear Allah and we just like paralyzed. I will not do anything. I'm so afraid of Allah. No, this does not mean that. What this means is that we have so much fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that I do not want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be upset with me. I do not want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be angry with me. I do not want the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I am scared of it so much that I leave from my life. I, I make an effort to leave from my life. Everything from which there is a fear of punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A true Muslim, what do they do? They always think twice before they embark on anything that that uh, includes some kind of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We, we know what Allah likes and what Allah doesn't like. We know things which are haram. And anything which is taking to us in the direction of haram, right? if that does not um, impact us, we don't think twice before it, then something's wrong. Something's wrong. Then we 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 need to, uh, when we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will at least 
even if we end up doing that sin, but if something troubles us about it, then that's a good sign, alhamdulillah, that we are in a good path, alhamdulillah. If something's at least pinching us in the heart. Yes, that's a weak iman. A stronger iman is when we are able to st stop the thing and, um, you know, get ourselves out of it. But even if, let's say, somebody is an alcoholic, now they have been having too much alcohol and everything. They're trying to leave it, but every time they drink, they can't stop themselves. But every time they drink, they're like, yeah, Allah, I'm sorry. They're, they're, they're feeling bad about it. They're feeling remorseful about it and everything. This is still better than a person who's drinking like, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Allah SWT has good food, Rahim. I can do it. It's, it's okay. You guys are being too strict. Like This is not a big deal and, and everything. So the person who's at least feeling bad is in a better position. Yes, the best one is the one who would leave it, but at least um, the person is, is towards the Iman. The person in the middle that's in a better position uh, even though uh, from the outside we might look at both the two people who are in the sin and it might look the same right and also when we stop taking care of what other people think when we stop fearing other uh, other people other things other situations so much then and fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it actually frees us it, it liberates us it, it makes us like help us to breathe literally like a breathe a, breathe a breath of relief that you know otherwise when we are like it's like being a servant to too many things rather if you are slave to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone then this is like you know like they say for worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this one sajda this one sajda to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees you it makes you free from the sajda to everything else right وہ ایک سجدہ جسے تو گرا سمجھتا ہے ہزار سجدوں سے دلاتا ہے آدمی کو نجات right so this this one prostration that we do to allah subhanahu wa taala in with belief and everything that frees us from prostrating from bowing down from putting our head down our nose down in front of thousands and thousands of things right and also and what does it mean when we fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we also understand one we want to protect ourselves from the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we also understand that what ben whatever benefit allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed to give me no one can take it from me and whatever harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for me, even if the whole world comes together, uh, in, even if I make the whole world happy, they cannot they cannot stop that harm from coming to me. Even if they're happy with me, they cannot stop that harm from coming to me. Right? Uh, so uh, there is a hadith to the effect that Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, he said that one day I was riding behind the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa meaning they were sitting on the same ride and he was sitting behind the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on, the, on their ride, uh, meaning a camel or a horse. Right. And when he said, meaning the Prophet وسلم, said to Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, oh boy, I will instruct you in some matters. And this instructions for all of us as well. Right. The Prophet وسلم, said to him, oh boy, I, I will instruct you in some matters. Be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning be watchful of the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will preserve you. Be watchful of Allah. He will preserve you. Safeguard his rights. He will be ever with you. If you beg, beg of him alone. And if you need assistance, supplicate to Allah alone for help. And remember that if all the people gather to benefit you, they will not be able to benefit you except what Allah has foreordained for you. Meaning they will not be able to benefit you unless Allah has already written it for you. And if all of them gather to harm you, meaning all the people of the world gather to harm you, they will not be able to afflict you with anything other than that which Allah has predestined against you. The pens had been lifted and the ink had dried up. So what does that mean? That means that we be, be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We safeguard his rights. We supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We beg to him alone. We ask him for help alone. And we believe all good and all harm. Nothing can come without the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we will truly, it will help us to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly. And if you think about our own lives, uh, Shaitan did that before in the Battle of Badr, in the Battle of Uhud. He does that today. He will do that tomorrow as well. He will keep on his mission. His mission, mission is there. His, he will keep on doing his mission and he's, he'll keep on striving towards the same thing for all of us to scare the believers, to move them away from the path of Allah SWT. Fear is not his end goal. Fear is his, his tactic. Fear is his tactic, but his main goal is to move us away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala protect us uh, from the trips, uh, tricks and uh, traps of shaitan. The next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now addresses the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Muslims. And he says, 
those who and in you know, those who hasten towards disbelief they should not make you grieve O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O believers, those who are rushing and uh, working towards disbelief, don't, don't, don't be sad because of them. Don't grieve because of them. They cannot harm Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala at all. Don't worry. Allah Ta'ala is telling us, don't worry, I've got this. Don't worry. Yes, I know you're weak. I know you you feel weak. I know you look at all these powers of the world and you see that they are so strong. What what am what are we going to do? What am I going to do? How will I protect my brothers and sisters? What can I do? And what if they harm me? What if they harm my children? What if they are what, uh, what are they doing and everything? No 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 no. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not intend anything except Allah Subhanahu wa Taala intends not to spare for them any share in the hereafter. Now any money, power, resources, things they're getting now. Right. That is only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it whatever they was meant for them, Allah Ta'ala ta is giving them only in this life. They have they will have no share left for the hereafter. And for them, meaning in the hereafter, all they will have is for them is a mighty punishment. Walahum Adabun Azim. Right. So what had happened was um you know, like um after Uhud, some some Munafikin, some people, we know that Badr was a big victory and a lot of people had joined Islam after Badr because they want to be where the benefits are. Right? So Islam meant power that time. Like if I'm Islam, and, oh, this is this is growing up. Like um, uh, we know that everybody salutes the rising sun, right? So it's uh, okay, they had become Muslims. But now after the Battle of Uhud, many Munafikin who did not actually have Islam in their hearts, they actually left the face of Islam or there things start to come out in the open. When any fitna comes, when any real hardship comes, then we see the true face of people. That's always been the case, right? So the true face of a lot of people came out at that time and some even left Islam, right? And some started working against Islam, right? So from now on in the seerah, we will see that a lot of Munafikin, we will see that they actually labored under the false illusion that they can actually defeat this new religion of Islam. They, their uh, their purpose was, you know what, um, being with them is of no sense, so let's work against them, and if we defeat them, we become the new champions, we become the new leaders and everything. So all their efforts were to defeat this, and they thought they could stop Islam, because Islam to them felt like, oh, these are just like some, some weak people. They have no money. They have no resources. They have no nothing. What chance do they have against us? And with the help and support of Quraysh, we've got Quraysh. We will side up with their enemies, Quraysh. And like, um, so we see throughout the seer after this that they keep keep uh, causing mischief, right? So all their efforts from now onwards were directed against the Islam and Muslims, right? And this, this is from within from within and this is no this is nothing new actually right at the time of even at the time of every prophet there have been people who have try, tried to work against to work against the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right today the tools might be new right but even at the time of Pro, uh, prophet ibrahim al -Islam, for example they said burn the fire and help your idols burn the fire and help your idols by burning ibrahim because we'll stop this this what what is this new thing that he's saying worship only one and all of this and this and that like we will help our idols and we will audu billah, audu billah, um, um, burn like uh, they, they wanted to hurt ibrahim alayhi salam right so and but this this happens all the time and this happened uh, at the time of ibrahim alayhi salam this happened at the time of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam this has happened in the islamic history since then even if we see the history of the last few hundred years we will see that you will see that a lot of harm has come to the Muslims from within the people who joined the or who were Muslims and they they became hypocrites or they were traitors or they did this and and, and that that had led to the can a lot of condition that is today we, we know that uh, that they they've they helped the enemies from the from the inside they have helped the enemies and everything and so these people right um a lot of times like the Prophet would, would be sad about these people who have left uh, the belief or who are trying to harm the Muslims and everything while they are calling themselves Muslims sometimes. And um, so the Prophet is obviously Rahmatullahi Alameen, right? He wants good for all people. His mission is to save people from the hellfire and he he wants these people to be good. He's, he's sad about these people. He's like, yeah, Allah. like he, he wants these people to come back to the right path, not because not just because it's harming the Muslims but because they're harming themselves. Right? The Prophet ﷺ wants good for all mankind. He wants them to come back. He wants them to save himself. And so when they are not ready to leave disbelief, when they are doing all these efforts, they could have done all these efforts for the sake of Islam, but they're doing putting their efforts the other side. 
right? And it is making the Prophet sad, and uh, he's he's uh, he's sad about these people. Like, why are they doing this to themselves? And also, they're hurting the other Muslims, right? So it's it's the Prophet sallallahu um, uh, gets sad by this, and Allah subhanahu wa taala is consoling the Prophet sallallahu here, and by extension, all of us, that don't don't be sad. You did your effort. Your effort is to give the message. Sometimes people will not listen to your message. You'll give your message and people will think, oh, this is like so boring, this old fashioned, this and that. What you're talking about, right? Like we have to live with the times. We have to do this. We have to do that. At those times when people don't listen to you, trying to you convey the message, but another person, the other person does not listen to you or disregards you or, um, you know, like tries to work actually against you and everything makes fun of you or, or does something, then don't don't be sad. You did your effort and that's fine, right? Um, so even today we will see that people, um, you know, there are people who, um, there are some people who who, uh, who don't have the time or who are not able to study the Quran or something, but we will see them. They will sit and make dua and ask Allah for help or they will at least be happy when they meet somebody else who's studying the Quran. They'll be like, Alhamdulillah, you're learning. Like, you know, I wish I could do that one day too, but but Alhamdulillah, you're doing that, right? So they, they will be happy about others who are doing this and everything. But uh, there are others, what they do is they won't study themselves. They won't try to get closer to the message of the Quran themselves and, um, you know, look the other way. When anybody's telling them something, they'll be like, okay, 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 don't tell me all of this. But they will also make an effort to stop others. They will say, you know what you're doing with your time? You spend like two hours, two whole hours for studying of this. You could have earned so much, you know, like how much the minimum wages, you could have earned so much more money. You're like your business could be more. If you put that same amount of time in your business, you could earn so much more thing, right? You're putting so much time in this and everything. So they will and they will make excuses as if they're your your well wishers, right? And uh, they will make all these like they will try to stop people. They'll make an effort to stop people. They want to harm the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they cannot do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying they cannot do it. They will never be able to harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or meaning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that he will complete his nur, right? Like for And they will never be able to read. Even in the last century, we see in Russia until the last century or something, the Quran was prohibited. People used to hide and pray the Quran, right? They had made, they had banned the Quran, right? So people had to hide and uh, think, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala has made it easy for us. And the Quran, uh, you know, we have access to the Quran. We have access to the study of the Quran. We have access to the different books about the Quran, the tafasir of the Quran and everything. But people would not have access to the Quran. They had to hide and pray the Quran, right? But was it, were they able to stop Islam from growing even in the soil of Russia, right? No, we know that they have a lot of masjids now. They have a lot of masajid now and everything, right? And also we learn here that those who who um, who try to ha harbor enmity against Islam or against the Prophet Sallallahu it is as if they are declaring their enmity with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? And uh, they have a mission. They are trying. They're working hard on this mission. They're putting their money, their energy, their resources, their time into this mission of kufr or on their mission of um, what they think they can defeat Islam or they can put away Islam or they can stop people from coming to Islam. They have one mission, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has another mission. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has another mission that in you know in this um, despite somebody when when somebody is disobeying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. When somebody is going in a path of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're still getting a lot of dunya. They're still getting a lot of like wealth and power and fame and prestige everywhere. They're being like applauded. People are giving standing ovations and people are like, wow, you're so good. And they, you're wearing the they're wearing the best brand of clothes. They're like they have all the money in the world. They're eating at the best restaurants. They're flying from the first class wherever they're flying and everything. Their their life, like when anybody looks at them, sometimes when we look at people who are doing sin, they're they're living a life of riba. They're torturing others. They're oppressing others. And I think we look at them like, yeah, Allah, they're doing so wrong and they're still getting so much. And as opposed to that, a person who is trying to obey the commands of Allah, let's say they, they left all riba. Um, based transactions. They left uh, some business which is which was had some harm 
harmful things in it or not allowed things in that. Maybe they had an alcohol store and they closed it down or something. And after they became Muslim, they're like, no, I can't do this anymore. But it had a lot of profits. It had a lot of money, right? So now they will lose all that money, right? Because the Prophet ﷺ told us to the effect that whoever works to build their akhira will do some, uh, you know, like will bear some loss of this dunya. And whoever works towards the ben too much of this dunya will make some loss for the akhirah. So it's up to us, us what we do, right? So for us, what happens is when somebody is when somebody is working for the deen, when somebody is trying to do things the way Allah Subhanahu has asked us to do, and we bear some financial losses, and some people leave us, and we used to be like the life of the parties, but now people don't want to hang out with us because they think we are too boring and everything, or we don't have as much money as we used to have, or like uh, people think we are like so uh, we don't have uh, so much talents. You know, you used to be such a smart girl, you used to be such a smart boy. What happened to you? We had such high expectations of you, and look at you, what you're doing. You're just sitting in a corner and just reading this one book and everything. You could have like the world at your fingertips and everything right so um but if for such a person and as opposed to that we see another person doing all these sins and haram and everything and yet they're having all this money and luxuries and everything sometimes a thought might come you know what i'm doing all this for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but why are these people getting all of this all all the luxuries and all the benefits and all the things and everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that despite the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if somebody is getting a lot of dunya, then what is actually happening here? This is a hidden form of adab. Why? Because in the afterlife, there will be no portion for that. And afterlife is big and lasting. Uh, this Whatever is in dunya, will, this dunya is going to finish. Right. So this is, they will get adab azim, the huge punishment because there's nothing good left for them now. All good all money, power, resources, comfort, this, that, whatever was meant for them. They could have got it in the Akhira too. But now they have been disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They keep disobeying, they keep disobeying, they keep disobeying. They keep working hard to defeat Islam. Now there's nothing left for them in the Akhira except a big punishment, which is waiting for them. Uh, may Allah ta'ala protect us from that, right? Allahumma la ja'alna min May Allah ta'ala not make us of those people. Then the next level of people. Uh, now we are learning about the different levels of people or different aspects of uh, the people of, um, you know, the people who will get punishments in the afterlife and everything. Now, the, the next thing that people are doing on the next level of people is those who have purchased disbelief. Kufra bil iman. Those who have purchased kufr in, in, uh, in place of iman, meaning uh, slowly what happened is like they 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 were on iman they they were they they were believers in the beginning but what happened is and they thought they were believers they were although they were weak they, they came to the belief a little bit then they started feeling sympathy towards people on kufr or the lifestyles of kufr they start feeling sympathetic to you know what this is good this is like with the times this is how everybody lives this is the way and everything right and then for example let's say one person they like some ad or some vulgarity or something on television right let's say they they, they start looking at something and they're like yeah it's not that bad actually you know this is a good person maybe they're wearing immodest clothes and maybe they're into haram relationships and everything on the tv we see that but they're doing so much charity they are so good people they have so much money they have such lifestyle they're so nice to talk they're so like um they're so well uh you know when they speak everybody just listens and everything they're so smooth and everything they're they're good people come on you know like so what happens is you start feeling sympathetic towards those who are on kufr and you, they start this uh, this one person who wasn't really they start liking uh, some advertisement, some kind of vulgarity on television. Now they, and the second, then what happens is slowly they they start saying to the bad thing, this is actually good. They start being impressed. Look how nice this is looking. You know, like such a nice dress, such a nice hair. Hair is the beauty of a woman, right? Like you do this hair properly and nicely. Look and look at you. How you are like always like this, like uh, like an old woman, all like just like cloth all around you and everything. Look at this, this other uh, picture of the, or or this this ladies and who are like they are so well dressed. They have these tight skirts and such nice makeup. They know how to carry themselves and everything, right? So they they start calling these things. They start being impressed by these things, and then what happens in the next time once they're impressed enough, they start implementing it in their own lives, right? And then iman goes away. Then Iman goes away. Then a person leaves halal and goes towards haram, right? And 
at that time, at the time of the Prophet, so we look at the context at that time, who, who made these transactions? The Jews of Medina at that time made this transaction. They had knowledge. They knew that this is the Prophet. They were the first ones who were expected to side with the Prophet. But they made this transaction over our, uh, our power, our prestige and our community is too big for that. We don't want to give that up, right? The hypocrites also of Medina, they had read the Kalima. They were praying with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What we would, me and you would give to be able to spend one Salah, to, to be able to pray one Salah of your, our life behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What me and you would be ready to give for that? And they had it every day. They were praying behind the Prophet Sallallahu They had said their Shahada in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And yet, they started working against Islam. What? Uh, how unfortunate! How um, you know? How uh, how sad for them, really, right? They had even read the Kalima, and yet they're giving it up, right? If they left, if they're leaving halal and taking on haram, then do they think that it will harm Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in any bit, right? Was your ibadah conditional on your demands? That when you when things happen according to what you like, then you will then you will be a Muslim, then you'll be a believer, and then you'll be everything and everything. And when anything doesn't happen your way, you you're like you're doubting yourself, you're doubting your iman, or you're starting to work against the iman, or you're giving up your faith and taking up the disbelief because that is that you feel is more powerful than everything. If anybody does that, then it's not going to harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one bit. Right? And how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, cash them, he he makes them even more. He gives them even more and more of this world, right? Right. And then the punishment that they will get, such people who had Iman, but then they gave up uh, Iman, right? Because and, and then what did they do by this act? When they did this, they hurt the believers. Mm -hmm. The other believers who were around them, it was hurtful for them. Right, because like when when we love someone for the sake of Islam, when we when we when we think of each other as brothers and sisters, and the same brothers and sisters turn out not to be true Muslims, or they they stab us in the back, or they they are turn out to be traitors, that is actually more painful than the enemy, right? And so it is befitting that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives them a punishment in the hereafter, which is painful. So here Allah SWT is saying that they will get a punishment, but the punishment, the aspect of their punishment is that it will be a painful punishment. It will be a painful punishment, right? And then the next step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ Those, uh, do not let those who disbelieve think that the respite that we give to them is good for them. No, 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 no. We only give this respite to them so that it increases them in sense. And for them is a humiliating punishment, right? Because what they, again, what, what are they seeking? Why are people, the people who at that time and people even today, when they are Muslims or when they are working against Islam, whether from within or from outside, what are they seeking? They think they're going to get a lot of honor out of this. You know, they are going to be victorious. They are going to push this Islam thing down and they were going to extinguish this. They're going to finish this and they are going to be the powerful ones. They are going to be the ones everyone in the world looks up to and they are going to be the unmatched leaders of the world. And so they are looking for a certain position, right? And it is befitting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them a punishment which is humiliating, right? The exact opposite. You wanted honor. Look, this the way you were seeking. Yes, when somebody wants honor, Allah SWT told us in the beginning of uh, Surah Al Imran itself, right? Um, Izzat is in the hands of Allah, and Zilla is in the hands of Allah SWT. He gives honor to whom he likes, and he humiliates those he likes right those those and, and again that is deserved he meaning doesn't he it's not like what he likes based on just random things based on what a person proves himself to be right but nobody can dictate uh, what anybody uh, to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala audhu billah what somebody should be getting right so they were seeking honor but they were seeking honor away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what a muslim does is what a believer does is we seek honor when we want honor too but we seek honor with allah Right, the a disbeliever or a hypocrite or a, um, you know like anybody working against Islam, they seek honor from places other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and so in the hereafter, 
Allah, they never sought honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give them any honor and in the uh, afterlife. So the punishment there would be humiliating for them. It will be, they will be humiliated in front of everybody, right? Um, in, uh, humiliated in their own eyes and humiliated in front of everybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't even look at them, won't even acknowledge them everything and and for the believers we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will we will we will be able to see him we will be able to talk to him uh, may Allah ta'ala make us of those people who he's pleased with right so in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that uh, we give them respite right so num, uh, uh, numli basically is mean, means that a long life which is also led with a lot of uh, meaning a lot of money, a lot of ease financially, a lot of resources, right? So a person who has a long life and a lot of uh, wealth as well, right? But uh, in this case, what we're talking about is when Allah SWT gives someone this, while their amal is bad, while they're disbelievers, so they were doing, they're doing wrong deeds, but they're getting long life. So we see, if even if we in our own life, if we see people, if we watch people around, we will see as people grow old, we will see two kinds of behaviors, two kinds of people all around us when they grow old. One kind of people is as they grow old, their amal, their uh, actions become very beautiful. They become softer, they become kinder, they, they're doing more and more good deeds, they're rushing to help others, they're rushing to do good, they're rushing to be of benefit to the mankind, they're doing more uh, salah, they're doing more tahajjud, they're more, doing more dhikr, they're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and everything. As they're growing older, they're like, okay, like my my second half of my life has started, now I am um, I have to prepare to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they increase in all these things, they increase, they try to study the Quran, they try to read the Quran. They make an effort for all these things, right? As opposed to that, there are other people as they grow old, they grow more and more vulgar. They grow more and more nasty. Like they are, they are ill-mannered. They will talk to people in a way that like even people are like wanting to get rid of them. Like they, like when will these people go so that we also can breathe easy, right? So they become more and more obnox obnoxious day by day. They are become like, um, so even in, in normal day-to-day -day things, we will see as people grow old, there are two kinds of behaviors that we see. Right, and the Prophet ﷺ told us to the effect that the kind of people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, is the one who has a long life and they spend their long life in doing good deeds. Those are the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a lot. That they have a long life, Allah ta'ala gave them a long life and they're utilizing that long life in doing a lot of good deeds. But the 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 worst in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those people to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a long life, right? But what do they do is they use it in bad deeds. They use that long life and all the money, all the resources, all the all the freedom, all the things that Allah Ta'ala gave them, they use it for wrong things, right? Um, so what, what why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them all um, you know, like all this, all this, this, uh, these things that they could benefit from. I think the purpose was that they could do good deeds, right? And everything, right? So, but what they're doing is something wrong. And and we should, uh, as we go ahead in our study of the Quran, as we come closer to the deen, we should check ourselves. What, as my life is going ahead, what, where am I rushing towards, right? Like we know that the Prophet ﷺ told us to the effect that this, this dunya is, is like a prison for a believer, Right. But this dunya is like a heaven for a disbeliever because for them, this is it. For us, this is just a test. So we have to always watch ourselves. We are always watching ourselves. We are always seeing what what am I doing with this? What am I doing with this? I don't want to uh, I don't want to do anything that upset Allah. So we are like for us, this life is hard in, in that sense that we are always watching ourselves. A disbeliever says like free. There's, they have nothing to watch themselves for. But what we want is we want to be free in the afterlife. We are looking our, our aim is different. We look at this life just as an examination paper. In an examination paper, when somebody goes to write an exam, they don't say, okay, once I have an AC and, you know, like I have the, the best of the pen and the best of the sheets, only then I will write my exam. Or, you know, like my chair should be so comfortable. Otherwise, I'm just like having a dance party or something. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to enjoy myself. We don't do that. When we go to write an exam, we focus on the exam. A believer knows this life is a test. So we focus on the exam. We focus on the test, right? And um, so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this, gives respite, gives this long life, give this, uh, give this um, long life and also this long resources, like a lot of, lot of resources, a lot of money, a lot of power, a lot of wealth, a lot of ability to do stuff. Then 
Where do we use that? Whatever ability any of us has, where do we use that? And so in these ayat, what we are learning is this tussle between um, the forces of shayateen, shayateen and the people of Iman. That started actually at the time of the birth of Adam alayhi salam. The enmity in the heart of shaitan started at the time of creation of Adam alayhi salam, the creation of Adam alayhi salam itself. Adam alayhi salam had not even like, um, yeah, you know, like uh, he, he was not even, he had not even come to this earth yet, right? The enmity had started even then. And this tussle between the forces of shaitan the forces, uh, the the shayateen from the jinn and the ins, from the uh, human beings and the jinns, and the people of Iman. This this tussle will continue till the end of the time as well. We'll have it always. These two forces will always exist. It won't be just only good or the only bad in the world, right? So, if the forces were working for the uh, shayateen, if they are getting up and doing all these efforts and everything, then one thing for us is why don't we do efforts for our thing? Because we are much more committed to our iman than they are committed to kufr. People of kufr, they are with each other only for benefits. They are friends for benefits. They are not friends for any other sake. Once their benefit changes, even they will leave each other also. They will kick each other also. And uh, so they, they are not like combined like that. But when we are together for the deen, we watch out for each other. We have love for each other. We have true love for each other and everything. And when they are doing that effort for like a purpose, which is not even uh, worthy of uh, being a good purpose, we have a much stronger purpose. So we should strive much more. Why don't we strive much more, right? Sometimes what we find is a lot of us, we, we just sit and keep discussing. We keep looking for conspiracy theories, like who's doing what wrong. And, you know, like people are putting us in so much hard thing. People are not supporting us in this and that and everything, right? So, Rather, what we should do is we should we should uh, strive in the path of Iman. We should do something. We should talk to people. We should do whatever is in our our hands. We should do that, right? Um, not just to promote like different sects or different things or, or dividing the you no know, this is wrong and that is wrong and that is wrong or, or putting divisions amongst Muslim. We should put our energy in something constructive, right? Um, not in like leg pulling others and everything, but and not not in having a victim mentality, you know. Uh, hum, you know, like we are like poor me. I'm I am doing going through this poor me. Shaitan loves to put that in our head that poor you, you know, you're so miskeen, you're so poor. Like, see, you're so weak, you're so this and that. Yes, I am weak. I know I'm weak, but the one who I rely on is not weak. He's the strongest. The one I have on my side, whose side I am on, he's the strongest. So he's going to take care of me. Yes, something might be not be going in the way I want it, but. He, I, I'm with Allah. I, I'm on the team of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. My eyes are towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So how can I ever be in a victim mentality? How can I ever feel that I have no way out? Because the one that I worship owns all the ways that there are, right? So, and if we look at today, what can we do? Today's war actually is intellectual war, right? And um, so, what's the answer to this? That we should we should say love back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, like feel our purpose and see whatever each one of us can do, whatever we can do, wherever we can do for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we we should we should put our efforts in those things, right? And sometimes. Um, some people might ask that, okay, there are some people who, who are working against Islam or against Muslim. Why are they able to do so much? Like, why, why doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stop them, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want any portion from them for them in the Akhirah except the mighty punishment. And that's why, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fair. Uh, and nobody else is as fair as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he, what he has done is he has given them a respite in this world. So... What does that mean? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given somebody a lot of time, meaning a big a good life, or he's given them a lot of resources, meaning they're not facing hunger, they're not facing things, so they don't have much excuse left. They don't have any excuse left to not come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They should be thankful for the um, things they have and everything, right? So the time and the resources and the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them so much is so that they have the full opportunity to reform themselves. They have nothing stopping them to change themselves, to, to realize the, their own errors and return at some point to the fold of the faithful, to become a believer and everything, right? So they, Allah SWT has given them so much because he's still, even though a person has gone way ahead, even though a person committed 99 murders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still had the door open for him if he comes back. Even for Firaun, who used to kill babies by thousands every alternate year. Kill babies by thousands every alternate year. Audhu billah, audhu billah, audhu billah. What kind of monsters do this? Um, we have no words left. 
Um, so even for Firaun, Allah SWT told Musa Islam, go and talk to him softly and gently. Perhaps he might listen. Meaning there was a time the door was open even for Firaun. Even for Firaun because it was like the purpose is for all this thing is so that they can ad take advantage of this. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given them time after time after time another option, another uh, chance to come back, another chance to come back, another chance to come back, another chance to come back, right? So that they can keep, they can come back. But what they do instead, they become firm on disbelief and they keep committing sins more and more and more. They think like we are good, nobody's stopping us. Like wh what are you saying? If there is first, we don't know there's a half life, but if there is, I mean, I'm it. I, I will like I have to get everything there also. I mean, you guys are losers, you guys are losers here, you guys will be losers. That's how people have that kind of an attitude, right? And then this respite, this this uh, this uh, deal, this respite, this like long life or long resources or long things that Allah Ta'ala has given them, that becomes a cause of their ruin, right? Um, so in a sense, what it becomes like is that um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them respite and so they prepare through this respite, they prepare for their own ruin. They prepare for their own punishment. They think they're collecting the goods of this dunya by like uh, doing this haram here, this oppression there. They're taking this person's piece of land, pushing this one out of their land, torturing this person, killing that person, uh, harming that person, cheating somebody else and everything. They think whatever they're, uh, they're Collecting from this is like so good. They are just like enjoying themselves and everything. What they don't realize is whatever they're collecting, these things will become a fuel to burn them in the hell, hellfire. These very things that they're collecting will become a fuel for their hellfire. And the more they're collecting, the more they are igniting their own hellfire. The more they're making their punishment stronger, the more they're making their punishment bigger, the more they're making their punishment painful, the more they're making their punishment humiliating. Right. And so the somebody who does anything wrong for them to get a little bit of leeway is actually bad for them while they think it's good. Right. The the sin increasing means the adab is increasing. The sin reaching a very bad level, the sin, sin becoming more and more and more worse, meaning the punishment is becoming more and more and more and more worse. Right. May Allah Tara protect us for them. A mu'min's way is the opposite, though. Right. Um, you know, like they want to do good deeds and more age, more resources means more good deeds. Right. And if they do some mistake, what happens is they get caught quickly. Something happens, something small strikes them and they're like, oh, I did that mistake. I, I should do more istighfar and everything. Allah Ta'ala catches them quickly. Why? Because they're they are close to Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala. They come back quickly. They turn back to Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala quickly. So Allah Ta'ala brings us quickly, right? So for a mu'min, every day is a new opportunity for goodness. Every day we think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me another chance today. I got up today. I I slept. Sleep is a twin of death. And I woke up today, meaning I good, got a good life today. That's that's why we say Alhamdulillahi ladhi afani min mabdala. Sorry, Alhamdulillahi. Um, we, we say, yeah, Allah, thanks, uh, praise and thanks to you for waking me up and giving me a good life when we wake up in the morning, right? So we make this dua and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make all the morning of the car and all these other cars say like, yeah, Allah, give me the goodness from this day and everything, right? But on the other side, these people, they'll have a punishment which is humiliating. They were seeking the honor of this world. They will get the humiliation of the next, right? And when sometimes um, we think, that why are the challenges coming to me? I'm in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm getting all these challenges. Those people are away from the path of Allah. They, are, they seem like they are not having any challenges at all. Then when we uh, and when we study the Quran, then we get to know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell us in the next ayah that when we learn um, the next time, why do the challenges come to the believers? Why do the challenges come to the believers? Right. So uh, may Allah ta'ala make us of those people who uh, who are able to take lessons from the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are able to understand that these ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these ayat of the Quran, of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are for us, for our benefit. They might, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us through different things. He teaches us through the um, uh, incidents in the history. He teaches us through the uh, kaina, through the nature around us. He teaches us through what is happening in our own selves. He teaches us through the future, what is going to happen, the conversation of people in the Jannah and the hellfire. He teaches us through different things. But the message is for all of us. We should take the message. May Allah make us of those people who take the message, who implement it, who, 
who follow uh, his commandments, who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the biggest fear in our lives, who want to please him the most. Um, and uh, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts right for us in our deen, which is a source of guarding our affairs. May Allah ta'ala reform for us our world, which in which is our livelihood. May Allah ta'ala reform for us our hereafter, where uh, is our return? And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our life as a source of abundant goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our death as a source of peace from all evils. Um, just like Allah ta'ala united us as sisters in Islam in this world, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us as sisters in Islam on the day, day of judgment under the shade of his throne when there will be no shade except his. And then may he reunite us uh, as sisters in Islam in the highest level of paradise, Jannatul Firdaus. Uh, any goodness that came from today's class is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he's the owner of all goodness. Any shortcomings uh, are from myself because I'm a human being and open for mistakes. Uh, may Allah ta'ala forgive and may Allah ta'ala still accept, put khair, baraka, rahma and afia in this. Make this a means of increasing my iman and iman of anybody who listens to this today or any time in the future. Uh, Amin ya rahman rahimin. Subhanakallahumma. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka. 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 Wa natubu ilayk.